All right, so this one, tonight we're talking about how to be consistent with your diet and exercise, your 15 tips. Some of them I'll go through real fast and just kind of list them off, and then a couple of them we'll, we'll uh, talk about a little bit more in depth. Uh, because this, this really is probably the, the biggest uh, issue for most people as far as like if they're not you know, making uh, progress is they're just very inconsistent. And so um, when it comes to uh, trying to increase consistency with diet and exercise, you gotta kinda, as I go through these, think about where, where are you, how well are you doing at these right now? And if not, uh, how could you go about implementing at least some of them? The more, the better. I think there's sort of like a synergy with it. So if you, if you were, imagine if you're implementing all of these elements, then your consistency goes you know, way up. Um, so uh, I always like to point out that whenever you talk about consistency, uh, you have to always think about it in, from the perspective of, you know, some people will say, well, I'm just not consistent with my diet and exercise. And it's like, okay, so you're not consistent with diet and exercise, but are you're consistent in other things, right? They like, think about something that you're consistent at right now. Then you, going to work. Going to work. Yeah. Uh, any other examples? Something you're consistent at right now? Exercise. I'm consistent pretty consistent now. Diet. diet, a little harder. Yeah, what's another example of something, what would you say? Something consistent at? Oh, putting me on hiatus. <laughs> on the spot. I said the ones, I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I said the ones that he's like working. Walk my dogs. Walk your dogs. Okay, so now you think about it, the things that we are consistent at, there's a reason why we do them consistently. Uh, in fact, when we're trying to change our consistency, you know, so let's say we're trying to, quote unquote, eat better, right? Think about it, you're actually already being very consistent with not eating good, right? If you're trying to change how you eat, you're, that means you're consistently doing something else, right? So um, think about why, why would I, why would someone um, eat not so good or eat too much? Well, th generally speaking, the things that we do, you know, if you, if you think about this big picture perspective, the things that we do consistently, we usually do for one of two primary reasons. One, because the pain involved in not doing it is very high. So like, don't go to work, what happens? Right, if there's some pain gonna be involved there, right? It's gonna be difficult to survive. It's like a survival thing, right? I have to go to work. Taking birth control. <laughs> yes, there you go. Yeah, there's gonna be some pain involved. That's, and then, then the other is um, we derive a lot of pleasure, satisfaction from it. So the things we do consistently is be generally boils down to pain and pleasure in a sense, right? And you'll notice that with, there's a pattern here of this as well, and that when it, uh, when it comes to doing things that we know we should do, but that we don't do consistently, a lot of times it's because in our own mind, the difficulty, the pain, the expense, you know, however you want to think of it, is somewhat high. We know there's rewards to be had there, right? You know that working out and this is going to have some rewards, but there's also a bit of resistance because we're like, it's going to take up some of my time, it's going to take up some of my money, it's going to take up, you know, it's going to be a little bit of pain involved. Uh, and so we, we're always kind of fighting those things a little bit. And so that means that the better we can do at increasing the pleasure that we derive from whatever it is that we want to do and decreasing the pain a little bit, making it more enjoyable, typically the better we're going to be at doing it consistently, right? And then there's some other barriers, barriers that might be just more environmental, but let's go buzz through some of these real quick. So one of the first ones, start small, ease into it, don't, don't uh, go with extremes, kind of commit to the lifestyle. This one, think about it, how are we reducing pain here? Well, because we're not, ta we're not taking on something that seems overwhelming. A lot of times the reason people are, can't stick to it is because it's just so much pain, so much difficulty. You know, it's like, it seems like you're depriving yourself of everything. If someone's like, oh, you can never eat meat again, you can never eat cheese again, you can, you know, you start to be like, I don't even know if I want to do this diet because it sounds miserable, right? So start small, start with a little something. And the thing is, if you can adapt to that, you can always add another little thing in. And if you mentally commit to the process of starting small, saying like, hey, I might not be perfect right now, but I made a little change this month and I'm gonna try to make another one next month. And you know it's gonna be a journey and you're committed to the journey, that itself can be a huge part of your consistency. Finding your why, um, this, this means like trying to think a little bit deeper to like uh, beyond just like, you know, someone will come in and say, well, what's your, what do you want to try to achieve, you know, and they're like, oh, I want to lose five pounds or I want to lose 50 pounds. Yeah, yeah, but I, I understand you want to lose weight, but what are you really trying to achieve? What's, what's your why? Why do you want to lose 50 pounds? And it's like, because I absolutely feel miserable in my body and I, I want to be able to play with my kids. I want to play with my grandkids. I want to be able to do this. And like right now, I can't, I just feel embarrassed. You know, whatever the reason, but if you go a little deeper, you find that generally your, the things you want to achieve are not just superficial, but they kind of go deeper within. And if you can focus on that during the times that you're, you know, imagine if you're, if you're waking up and the only reason you're going to the gym is to lose four pounds, it's not very motivating. 
But if you go and wake up and you go to the gym and you're just like, so I can actually be alive so that I can be with my kids and you know, they don't have to, you know, be, you know, uh, able, you know, not able to do things that you know, they, they would like to do with, with their mom or dad or whatever it is. I'm just giving an example. Um, that can be more motivating for many people and help you to be a bit more consistent when you focus on your deeper why. Um, do active things that you love and enjoy. So, you know, find activities that you do enjoy because, I mean, just kind of common sense, you're more likely to do it if you look forward to doing it than if it's something where you're absolutely miserable. So, that's one of the reasons I like to try to make things where you have challenges and game and have a little fun and not just have it, and not even just changing up the routine so it's not boring. Because that's the other thing too, when you just keep doing the same routine every day, it can get kind of boring and stale, so you want to be able to change it up and have some more um, uh, enjoyment with it. Uh, eat tasty foods. This seems kind of common sense, but one of the reasons many diets fail is because people try to adopt diets that just don't taste good. So they don't enjoy it, and you think it's not sustainable, and they can't, the reason they're not consistent is because they're just miserable, right? There was a study done in Toronto that looked at people on low-carb diets versus higher-carb diets and, and dietary adherence. And they found that although the low-carb group had some good fat loss initially, at the end of the year study, the people on that low-carb diet had a difficult time not only adhering to the diet, but they also reported higher levels of like depression and anxiety and stress, which probably comes from being deprived of carbs, right? So um, eat, eating a diet that's, that's enjoyable uh, is going to be more likely to keep you consistent. So finding creative ways of making healthy food taste good is going to be uh, really important. Meal prep and follow a plan. This applies to workout and meal plan. Um, planning and having a plan to follow is going to help you be consistent, partly just because of the structure that it provides, uh, and especially if it's designed appropriately, right? If you have a plan that works and it has a good, you know, it's a good plan, then that is, it just gives you the structure that you need so you're not, you know, how many people do you know who walk into the gym and then the first thing they do is they look around and they're like, I just don't even know what to do today. They just feel sort of lost. They don't even don't feel like they can really push themselves or even want to get excited to do it the next day because they know they're going to show up and they have to try to come up with something on the spot and it's not very motivating. Um, new challenges. So anytime you have new challenges, a lot of times it gets the excitement up and you're more motivated. So trying to find new challenges and things that you can focus on, short-term little you know goals, uh, and and also measuring uh, progression as you go along. Measuring progression is important, like whether it be measuring your your waist body weight, lifts that you're lifting, you know, in your journal, even just writing a journal and talking about like how you feel and different things like that. This can all be a huge part of uh, being consistent. Make yourself accountable. Uh, you know, it could be a trainer, could be participating in a program. If you look at the National Weight Control Registry, 52% uh, of people who lost almost 100 pounds, I think it was, I think average weight loss was like 60 pounds, maintained over five years. But many of these people lost well over 100 pounds. And 52% of those people said that they did it with the help of some type of program, meaning that people who just did it by themselves, it's doable. But a lot of people say, I just do better if I'm in some kind of group or program or system. Uh, and just having a lot of things there, the social dynamic, the motivation, there's a lot of things that help people, I think, just being in a group that can be really, really helpful. And just even just the accountability part of it. Just one little thing here too is remember that when it comes to making yourself accountable, there are what many like psychologists will talk about what they call intrinsic motivation and then extrinsic. And intrinsic is oftentimes very highlighted as in, oh, you want to really be internally motivated to achieve your goals. And people who are just sort of internally motivated to do what they do tend to do better, they'll say, than people who are using sort of extrinsic motivators. And I think that it's true, but that doesn't mean that extrinsic motivators can't be really powerful. Extrinsic motivators are oftentimes things that are like somewhat, they're not really things that like positively, you know, uh, they give, give you an example, it's like a mortgage for a house or a car payment. It's extrinsic, it's being sort of forced, to, I don't wanna say forced, you entered into it willingly, but then once the contract signed and a few years go by and you don't wanna pay that contract anymore, it's sort of, extra, you're not, you know, you're, you're, you're motivated because again, the pain point involved in not paying is, is high. And so you continue to do it, you continue to be consistent uh, because there's some pain involved. And some people benefit from finding things they can do extrinsically, whether it be a contract or a deal with a friend. Uh, someone was telling me um, uh, yesterday that her and her husband are doing like a money jar and what they do is every week they put they each put 20 bucks in the jar. And then at the end of the week, they have a target for how many workouts they have to each do, and they hold each other accountable. And if they don't hit their target, then the other person has to relinquish whatever's in the jar. So if they do this week after week after week after week, and then they miss one week, then that week, whatever's in the jar, they all get to you know take. 
Uh, and they, and I, I suggest, we were talking and I said, well, what happens if you both miss the same amount of time? And we came up with the plan of, well, give it to the kids. So then the kids get the money so that, you know, if they both miss their workouts. Um, another person did a commitment where they basically said, if I miss my workouts, then I have to mop all the floors and they have this huge building. Um, and that's the deal they made with their spouse to say. So they're giving themselves, you know, they're intrinsically motivated, but they're also setting up some extrinsic things to where they're increasing the, the desire to be more consistent because they know there'll be a bit of pain involved if they cheat on their plan. And you can set up all sorts of things for that. In fact, there's a book called The Blackmail Diet by John Bear that goes into this. It's really cool. Um, let's see. Uh, Pick same time of day and schedule in advance. This is really important because workouts that aren't planned tend to not happen. So you know, many people, when they, they're, the people who never are consistent with exercise are almost always the people who are like, well, I'll do it when I can fit it into my schedule. The people who schedule it and plan it, those are the ones who tend to have much higher uh, consistency. Uh, do it with a friend. Um, that's, I think, enough said there. Doing it with a friend is like very motivating. That's why whenever someone's not here, we're always like, where is everybody? Because we just we all feel more energy and more motivation when we can do it with other people. And uh, that's why we miss them when they're not here. Have a behavior-based goal as well as short-term, long-term goals. So meaning that when you have a goal for a month, don't just focus on the end result. Don't just be thinking about like, I need to lose, you know, I got to lose five pounds by the end of this month. Think about what you're doing each day that's a behavior. So exercise is one of them, but having something very specific, like I'm gonna have a cup of vegetables at each lunch meal, or I'm gonna try, I'm gonna have two raw fruits every single day, or I'm gonna have two raw fruits at breakfast, or you know, you're having something very specific that you're really kind of in your head, you know, it's very specific, not vague. So in other words, don't say I'm gonna have more raw fruit this month. That's vague. It doesn't, you know, there's nothing specific about that, and it's not likely to happen. But one thing you can, one way you can increase your consistency is to get really specific and say, okay, I'm gonna have an apple or some other type of fresh fruit every lunch meal this month. Uh, and that's, that way it gives you something very specific to focus on and that behavior can lead to uh, weight loss and other types of benefits than uh, simply focusing on the end goal because that doesn't really change a whole lot. Uh, um, change your environment. This, this thing, read the book Change Anything by Joseph Grenny. This talks so much about how the power of what's around you is what's influencing you. You know, with the people you hang out with, the food that's in your house. If you're going home and the fridge is filled with ice cream and there's chips out, and you know, then of course it's going to be difficult to be consistent. But the person who walks home and their house is a safe place, so to speak, you know, they have the, all the good stuff there. It's hard to cheat on the diet because there's nothing there to cheat on, right? That's why they say that quote it says uh, Superman doesn't keep kryptonite under his bed, right? You know, you don't keep the stuff that is your, you know, your kryptonite lying around because yeah it's gonna screw you up so uh keep, get that stuff far away from you and have it only once in a while as a special treat um mentor someone else this is really important because when you're the example your level of consistency goes way up when you know someone else is watching you and when you know someone else is looking up to you and when you know someone's going to you for advice your 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 just desire to be more consistent and more more um uh um i don't just mean consistent with what you are your, your workouts and things like that but i just mean consistent with even what you say and what you do right is higher because you don't want to let that person down so i think mentoring someone or taking someone under your wing is a great way to kind of help you be consistent uh and that's a cool one um do it with someone who's more fit than you uh there's some cool studies showing when people worked out with people who were more fit they pushed harder because they, they didn't want to be perceived a certain way. But on the other hand, the person who was uh, um, uh, more fit tended to want to help the person that was underneath them, kind of back to this mentorship type thing. So they, they were showing this kind of cool dynamic when you're in a group where you're not all at the same level, right? You know, when sometimes when people are at the same level, you just don't really feel like you need to push that hard. But when you see someone around you working really hard, you kind of get a little bit like, I got to you know, not let this person completely show me up here and you tend to work a little bit harder. Um, don't, you don't maybe want to be with someone who's like way higher level to the point where it discourages you. Um, but it, I think it is good to, to, to try that. Um, last two, change your mind. This has to do a lot with just the way you think about yourself, the way you think about food and your relationship with food. Um, it's, it's an attitude type thing where, you know, a lot of people just, the part of why they're so inconsistent is because they're just always so, um, you know, uh, negative down on themselves they they don't believe it's possible they they have a um you know su such a um uh you know they're again back kind of to this one here where they're not you know committed to the lifestyle they're just always looking for that quick fix it's like you know you got to change your mind and think like this is gonna be a process i'm committed to the journey i know it's gonna happen in little baby steps but if i keep at it it's gonna get better and better with time the more i learn and the more i implement 
And then lastly, one of the biggest ones here is forgive yourself and start over again. Because, you know, sometimes you just, you mess up and then you're just so discouraged and so down on yourself. It's like you're punishing yourself, which doesn't help anything. So um, you have to, if, even if someone else isn't going to forgive you, forgive yourself and say, tomorrow I'm going to start over because it's a new day and I can begin again and try to get back on track and start increasing my consistency. That's it. 15 tips. Good luck.